okay good evening ladies and gentlemen uh, we're live now on the 34th edition of leadership talk with adegoke and um i'm live with my brother my friend ijiro onabrapoya a very versatile gentleman we've known ourselves for many years and i salute him and celebrate him for joining us tonight you're welcome sir <laughs> thank you okay yes so uh can you just um tell us who is ejiro on a back here well i'm a man on a journey of life and um i have chosen many paths some good some bad but at the end of the day the results and the lessons have been learned along the path. Um, originally, my training is in finance, and I went also into software development. Then I went a little bit into econometrics. But uh, my love for art primarily has um, been very much in my mind. As a matter of fact, I have a father who is an artist, a grandfather who is an artist. And wow. so more like art runs in the blood. So I am back in that forte, more like um, interested in the administrative, the training aspect of it, the mentoring, exhibitions, curatorship, and um, a lot of other stuff that adds to the development of art. So that's who I am today. Wow. So tell us, um, you know, uh, the relationship between art and leadership. Can you just share with us? Well, it's very important for all of us to understand that um, the arts is actually a reflection of society. Okay. In the sense that when artists try to depict the ideas that come to their mind, they're actually reflecting the state and the health of the society of which they come from, because the society influences their work. And so therefore, the arts and the artists have a responsibility to actually guide and give a direction and indi indicate the health status of the society. So that is where art and leadership comes in. Hmm. Wow, wow. So, but how did you get into leadership? Can you share with us how you got into leadership? Well, I started my first gallery in the year 1994 called the Palette Art Gallery. And amongst a lot of things, exhibitions, curatorial work, administrations, and um, things connected to art, I also decided that it was important to nurture and grow young artists. Okay. Because it is the young and unexposed artist of today that becomes the master and sought after artists of tomorrow. So if you catch them early, nurture them, you find out that you have created a path which they depend on. And by so doing, you create a group of people that will look back and say, look, this gentleman was partly instrumental to their work, to their progress, and to who they have become over the years. So that is um, how I have been involved with, with leadership in the area of mentorship. OK. Um, I know you were born into the family of arts. You know, your dad was, uh, oh, sorry, he's an artist. Mm. 
I believe he's almost 89 yeah. years old. Uh, yeah. Incidentally, you were also my classmate in university, you know, <laughs> in finance. Yeah. Um, so I can speak. Yeah. I, I know you so well. And your sister was also is also a good friend of mine. Um, yeah. You know, and you said your, your grandfather was also an artist, you know. Um, yeah. Now, I want you, you to share my grandfather cover. Was yeah. A, it, yeah. I went into, yeah. yeah. Um, I know your dad used to be um, a, 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 a teacher in St. Gregory's College. You know, uh, right. your dad, Professor Bruce Onobrakwea, his artworks are all over the place. He's a sculptor. Yeah. He's, a, he's, a, he's also, um, I want to say, a painter and also yeah. a printmaker. Uh, yeah. His works are in the, uh, you know, in the Vatican. His works are in the Smithsonian Institute. His works are, you know, in the British Museum. State Gallery, you know, uh, University of Lagos Library. I want you just to share a bit about your dad, you know, having been an apprentice and still working with him, collaboration with him. Well, um, my dad is a very passionate artist. And um, if you ask him, he will tell you that art is all that he knows. Now, he has invested all of his life into art in such a way that... Um, at the time they started, it didn't really matter how much they were making for it from art. And so therefore they had to find other things to augment their artistic talent in the sense that he more or less became an art teacher, which is a kind of um, digression from, from being an artist. Because um, to be a studio artist, you have to be focused on the techniques, the ideas, and you have to be an experimental artist. Now, mm. that in itself takes a lot of time. However, teaching art is related, but it's also partly a distraction, which meant that at some point he had to decide to leave um, um, regular teaching in the secondary school to focus more on his art and to focus on them. Um, workshops and organize things that will assist young artists to be, to grow and develop under him, either as um, him being a mentor and they been they studying his works and his, his life in order to see that there's a path for them. Now, don't forget that um, then, and maybe a little bit up till now, the, the 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 artist was more like put aside that oh if, if you if you told your dad that you wanted to study art um they'll probably ask you why i mean artists are hungry people <laughs> and they would prefer that you go to study medicine or engineering or or law you know in order to reflect um, um a, a, a position and um uh, in order to attain a position that will make you look like you know a successful person, but the artist and maybe the musician of those days it was a little more difficult. But um, my father was very focused on the fact that he wanted to use his art to depict and tell a story about his culture. Wow. Of which, wherever it is seen all over the world, they're able to understand, you know, and understand the narrative that is told from the perspective of the artist. Hmm. So his art is, 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 is actually a narrative to talk about the life, the culture, the religion of the traditional people as hmm. it was in the past. Hmm. So now his works have attracted attention from a lot of collectors all over the world. And up till today, I mean, it is selling for mega prizes in some of the international auctions and local auctions. And people are talking about it. There are discussions about how important his art is. There are people that have gone into doing PhD on his art. That is investigating his mind and wow. his um, narratives and his awesome. documentaries and all that. So that is the 89 year old man almost 90 year old man you you see today and you have that been privileged to learn you've been privileged to learn from from him you know um he's a very humble man 
I've been to your house on several occasions and I see him just, you know. Sorry, it seems like I can't hear what you're saying. Can you hear me now? I, I think there's a problem with the audio. Okay, can you hear me? I can, but it's very faint, very faint. All right. Um. Okay, I'll just try and... Uh, can you come back into the studio? Yeah, can you hear me now? Um, hold on. Okay. Yes. If you're just joining us, I've been speaking with my friend, uh, Ejiro Onabrakoya, and we're talking on the, taking Hello? the topic leadership and arts. Leadership and arts. And uh, tonight he's been just sharing his experience about his journey with his dad, who is uh, a renowned artist, Professor Bruce Onobrakwe, whose works are all over the world. You know, his dad is a sculptor, his dad is an artist, his dad is also a print maker. You can hear me now, I believe. There's a problem with the audio. There's a okay. You can't hear me, but I can. I can hear you. I can hear you, but it's very faint. It's very faint. Okay. Um, but maybe I can try and um, okay. Just attend to your questions. All right. Okay. Now I want you to speak on this uh, concerning art. Um, I want you to the journey. You know, how has it been serving under your dad? Well. It's it's been a very interesting journey, and um, working with him. As a matter of fact, when we're in school and university and all that, every holiday we will come in as apprentice and work and learn the trade. But as time goes on, I I focus more on marketing and creating um, distribution product lines and traveling for exhibitions and curating exhibitions and representing him in negotiations and discussing, you know, with, with people. Um, the whole idea is selling a brand and um, the brand is already good, but you also have to push it. Now the experience is topsy-turvy. Um, I have learned a lot because there are no laid down templates for um, for working in those directions. You know, these are new things that people, they don't laid down templates. So you always have to be creative. You always have to be intuitive. You always have to be very hopeful. So, you know, it, it, has, it has made me grow very, very well. It has developed me and it has made me strong. Okay, excellent. Um, that's, that's awesome. Now I want to speak to this. I mean, you are also you. You sell art. I mean, what's your strategy, even in selling art? You know, because people, some people see art as just now. In case an example, there was a gentleman who who put on the social media recently about those who draw. You know, uh, just uh, your 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 have your your photo and draw. You know, and I, I shared that with you. Can you speak to that? It says that it's not um, it's not authentic. That it should be discouraged. What is what is authentic, and what is not authentic? You must give credit to a fellow who can take either a paint or a brush or a pencil or a pen, and more like replicate something on a photograph or a live subject. It takes a lot, not, not, not many people that do that. So what is authentic and what is not authentic? Now, okay, let's, let's take, for example, you, you, you have a photographer take a picture of you. That is some form of art in itself. Now, you have an artist to do a rendition of that photograph. It's another expression of art in itself. Or you have an artist doing a rendition of a life person, hmm. you know. So I don't understand where the the idea of um, of um, that to be discouraged. 
it is creativity. And by any standards, creativity should always be encouraged. And um, the effort alone is not ordinary. It comes from within. That effort must be encouraged. And when it's encouraged, the artist is stimulated to hmm. continue to create things, you know? Hmm. Hmm. And so um, I, I, I will say that um, all forms of um, artistic rendition is good and hmm. should be encouraged. Okay. I, 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 I just want to take you back. There was a time uh, a, a young guy, you know, somewhere in Ikeja, I think he was about nine years old, he, he, you know, just to a follow up to this, drew, um, uh, you know, a picture of, uh, I think it was, it, uh, 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 is it Obama or one of these world presidents or I don't the know. French where, president, maybe. Uh, you, yeah, remember. Yeah. Yeah, do you remember? Yes, and I the do. guy was. Uh, yeah, the guy was. I think he, the guy was. Uh, it was from a very poor background, but because of that uh, particular work, the the young man was, you know, brought into prominence. You know, yeah. uh, through his works. Now, I want to. We are talking about leadership and arts. How you know what is the role of arts? How can arts encourage be used to uh, grow leadership? Sorry, can you can you take that again? The last I said, how can it? arts be used to grow leadership? Be used to grow leadership through leadership. How can arts be used to encourage leadership? Hmm. If you look all over the world, and if you look at history, artists, visual artists, have been part of the court of leaders. They have been part and parcel of the court of leaders, such that the leaders will use the arts of the people, will exhibit them and show them off to either mm. his friends or to diplomats or international. It, it, it kind of gives it, you know, um, it gives it some kind of um, Credibility, it's softening the hearts of people. For example, I'll give you an example that um, um, I have once delivered art from one of our presidents here to Saddam Hussein in Baghdad. Wow. You know, and um, it, it brought so much joy to Saddam Hussein, and um, he looked at it, and it was something he hadn't, it was a kind of art he hadn't seen before. So it was more or less representative of the kind of art from this part of the world. And, you know, so leadership will use art to make a case for their people, for the creative capacity, for the conceptual con concepts of the people, and to tell a story about the culture of the people. You see, so that, that, is, that is what I, I feel leadership and art will do. Okay, thank you so much. So now, uh, to follow up on that, I want to ask you, you know, I mean, a, a lot of art exhibitions, how do you interpret art, you know? I mean, like, like your dad's uh, artworks. Some people come there and he begins to tell them, you know, <laughs> what he's trying to, you know, communicate. Can, can you just share with us? Because sometimes I find it very amusing. How do you communicate what is drawn? Yes. Well... <clears throat> It's important, first of all, for you to allow the audience to take a look at the piece of art and to find out what is the art speaking to him? What is the art saying to him? Um, does he like the art? Does he like the colors? Does it speak to his soul? Does it soothe him and all that? Now, there are some artistic pieces that are actually very abstract and they come from the mind of the artist. Now, depending on who the person is, if you, if you tend to go to exhibitions a lot and focus on a lot of artworks, you will find that, that there will be some pieces that will appeal to you more than others. So my take is that, look, you allow the audience to see what they see hmm. and explain it to themselves first. Now, the second part of it is 
to explain what the artist is trying to communicate. To explain what the artist is trying to communicate. Now, sometimes what the artist is trying to communicate may not be what the fellow sees. Yeah. But it didn't really matter, you know. What matters is that there has been some kind of communication. And you see, the, the I must tell you that the artist is a kind of special person because he actually is very introspective. He goes within himself and brings out what is there. It's a kind of co-creative nature, you know, the kind of um, um, uh, the, the, the kind of gift that God gave us to go and create things, you mm -hmm. know. And so you find that an artist will live forever. If you have a piece of Van Gogh or Bruce Limbrakwe in your house, it will be there for as long as the art is there. Mm. But the life of the artist is limited. It will live mm. 90 years, 100 years, but his works will live forever. So you see, that's why we're still talking about people like Picasso, Van Gogh, Matisse, and those kind of things. Wow, wow, wow. Amazing, you know. There's uh, Michelangelo. There's uh, there's uh, Donatello. There's uh, you know Gian Lorenzo, Picasso, now, yeah, Van Picasso, Gogh. Van, yeah, yeah. I mean, now, now I, I see that art. You know, there's a lot of Italians. You know, we have a lot of Italians. You know, why is it that you know when it comes to you know the work of artists? It's just your dad and maybe just a few people that are, are, are known all over the world. You know, Uche Okeke, you know. I, I, I don't agree with you that it's just a few people. Okay. Now, I will start from the beginning. I mean, we have people like Aino, Onabolu, who are the older generation of artists, even older than my father. You have people like um, Ben Wongo, who, you know, were accomplished artists and they were celebrated all over the world. You have um, the generation of my father who um, were described as the Zaria rebels. Hmm. Um, I'm talking of Uche Okeke, Ben Wongo, uh, no, sorry, Uche Okeke, Yusuf Grillo, um, um, you know, a few of them. They were described as the Zaria rebels. And now, that generation now gave birth to a new generation of artists. There's a lot of art, people doing experimental arts these days, and they are all over the world. Nigerians mm. are doing all over the world. And with the, with the advent of the social media, it's now very easy to be able to exhibit works all over the world without being there. I'll tell you what used to happen in the past. My father used to have to physically carry artworks on a plane, and go to Germany or Israel or Japan or Norway and all that. But this time around, it's a little different. Hmm. With the kind of, with the advent of social media, it's much hmm. easier to be able to just show your works all over the world and responses come as soon as possible, hmm. you know? So it is much easier now. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Now, how can that be, you know, in terms of, growing, you know, encouraging the youth to go into leadership? How can art be used to encourage the youth? Because we have a lot of, you know, joblessness and idleness and, you know. It's very interesting you ask that question because um, um, there's a lot of creative energy amongst youths. And if it is not channeled properly, they're probably going to use it in a funny manner. I remember, um, for example, when um, Governor Ambode was governor of Lagos State, um, he brought some of us together to do a kind of, um, you know, kind of mentoring of young artists and asking them to do some work and bring them, and then we exhibited them, we gave them awards, we gave them prizes, and also monetary rewards and all that. And a lot of the artists, a lot of the pieces were sold, a lot of them, at a very huge exhibition which we arranged at the co-hotel. Now, there are 
a lot of children and young people that you find out that they are restless. Hmm. Now, if you channel that restlessness into some kind of artistic endeavor, you find out that, that their creative abilities have been stimulated. Hmm. Once it is stimulated and they are encouraged, you find out that they are growing from stage to stage and they develop the strength in creativity. After that, they realize that people like what they are doing and people encourage them to work. And so hmm. they're able to do a lot more. Hmm. Wow, wow. I, I know there's, you know, uh, you know that, that's, that's, in fact, that's a, a huge area, you know, to encourage uh, creativity. So how can you, what role are you playing to encourage, you know, mentorship? Are you, you, you know, do you have a mentorship uh, strategy to even bring in some youth? Because, I mean, I know, like you said, your dad has mentored quite a number of people all over the world, you know. And uh, what role, you know, are you playing to ensure that people are encouraged to go into that area as well? Mm. Yeah. Um, I always get um, requests for young people. They say, okay, during holidays, young people who are maybe in the primary school or secondary school, that they think that they may have some artistic talent, that I should, I should, um, I should design something for them to occupy their time. Mm. So what I do is that I, I put a few young artists together and send them to various places to yeah. do kind of mini workshops, mini workshops. Now, we also have um, situations where we invite young people, we take them to exhibitions, we take them to artists, and after that, we encourage them to try and be creative. And it's very important that a lot of these young people, something comes out of them, because I think creativity is a natural thing, you know? Hmm. Now, I'll tell you that um, we have a museum space and a workshop space in Delta States. We call it the Hamatan Workshop and the Bruce Umbraquia Gallery. Now, the Hamatan Workshop has two sessions every year for about between six to eight weeks every year, um, one in February and one in August. And in that process, what happens is that sometimes up to a hundred artists, wow. both young artists and older artists come together, live together in the same place, interact wow. and work together wow. for a period of about six to eight weeks, sometimes six a weeks? little more. Amazing. Yes, sometimes a little more. Wow. In that case, they are able to sit down and get inspired by each other Hmm. They cooperate and collaborate, and they also get into a situation whereby they have they sit down and discuss. People come to talk to them, either financial experts or either organizational experts, well and see how well they can better their lives. The truth is that the artists may not be as organized as some of the other people because, I mean, their minds are very creative, and sometimes it's said that artists are crazy people. But no, it's not true. They, they're, they're just gifted and um, they pursue their gift extensively. Wow. Wow. I want to now talk about, you know, pricing, you know. Um, when you look at, uh, you know, Leano, Leonardo, uh, Vinci and um, Michelangelo, you know, their artworks, is it because those artworks are old? Why are they so expensive? Well, when you talk about expensive, we're talking about value. Okay. Okay. Value. When you talk about value, you, you, you're also talking about rarity. Hmm. How rare is a piece of art? You know, when you talk about rarity, you're also talking about what is the demand for that piece of art? Hmm. How many people want that piece of art? Hmm. Are people... Are people... Do they want it badly enough to be able to go to an auction and bid? It is the bidding, it is the bidding in auctions and um, exhibitions that makes those things expensive. 
Wow. For example, a Michelangelo that is um, maybe, let's give an example, 75 years old and has a history to it. There'll be a few people, more than one person that would like to own it. Hmm. So the whole idea is to take it to an auction. And when it gets to the auction, the auction kind of determines an acceptable price for the market. There are a few auctions all over the world. There are even a few auctions in Nigeria. And um, the auction tends to stabilize the prices. And if we say a Benuomo, you know, you can tell that, okay, a Benuomo of 1965 will, will, will be priced between X and Y million naira, depending on um, what period, what the theme is, what um, the idea of the piece, what material the piece is made and all that. So it is the value that people attach to art that makes it expensive. It's not wow. just expensive on its own. Wow. When people attach value to anything, it becomes expensive. Wow. So that's the situation about value. That is why those works are expensive. Now, when you talk about, I mean, like your dad, I mean, his works are, you know, in the British Museum, Tate Gallery, you know, he's got in the Vatican, he's even gotten, a, you know, an award by the Pope, you know. How, you know, for those who are coming up right now, how can they get into that space where their works will be recognized just like your dad, you know, Professor uh, Bruce Onobrakwea? What does it take to get, you know, into that league? You see, as an artist, it's very important that you spend time working. You spend time conceptualizing. You have to be doing something different. You can't just be doing things that all other artists are doing and hope okay. to get serious accolade. There has to be something different about you. Now, so the first is that you have to be hardworking, you have to be experimental, you have to be consistent in your growth. Wow. Now, secondly, you have to be involved in either group art exhibitions okay. or solo art exhibitions. Now, thirdly, you have to be published. Hmm. You have to be published. Hmm. A publication is like an embassy. It goes round the world where you cannot go hmm. to a publication about your works will go. Now, yeah. and you have to be open to, 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 to people's ideas. You have to also be open to criticisms. You have to be open to encouragement and all that. Now, having done this part, the potential clients and customers, they begin to, you know, people begin to speak about you. They begin hmm. to talk about your work. Your work becomes... It it, it, it it becomes something that people are interested in. They're asking questions. Who is this artist? Why is he doing this? And why is he doing that? So at the end of the day, you become some kind of important perspective. It takes time. Hmm. I mean, yes, there may be a few artists that will, will spring up one day hmm. and become great the next hmm. day, but very hmm. few. For example, you talked about that young artist. Now, young at that age, it's important that you do not overexpose that young man. It wow. can actually destroy his um, it can wow. actually destroy his career if wow. he decides to be an artist. Now, what is important is that okay, we recognize that there's talent here. Hmm. The next thing to do is to go through the stages of education in the wow. arts such wow. that you learn how to use different medium or media, you learn how to present your works, you learn how to frame hmm. your works, you learn how to write about your works. Hmm. If you don't write about your works, you have to interpret your works or you have to get Someone historians to... to write about your work. Hmm. You know, In this way, you are communicating your thoughts and your ideas. Yeah. And yeah. from time to time, you find out that people now see it as something that they want to be part of, hmm. you know? And in time, you know, you become, you become it's, not, it's not all artists that are going to be superstars, but there's a space for everybody. And you never know who is looking. 
You never know. It could be hmm. it could be the president of a country that is looking. It could be the the head of a museum. It could be the head of um, an institution that says, "Look, I just like this piece of art, and I want us to acquire it for our as as our permanent collection." Hmm. Don't also forget that art has a tremendous secondary value. Wow, a tremendous secondary value. That is to say that. Okay, you buy a piece of art for 1,000 Naira. As time goes on, depending on how the profile of the artist is increasing, it will appreciate. Wow. It will appreciate. I mean, wow. there's no doubt about that. It will appreciate. So that means I have um, some artworks in my house. <laughs> <laughs> when, it <laughs> when it appreciates, it, it's, I, it's, it's I, a good store of value. I a bought some about store. 20 years ago, so I can I can bring it to the auction and even come please and test bring them. And let's, please bring them. We will do something with really, them. I'm already but a millionaire. I would advise you to skip them. <laughs> Let your children inherit them. It's of more value. I want to know my value. I want to know my <laughs> my net worth. <laughs> that's that's interesting. Yeah. You know, so what you're saying is that it's you know, in getting the price. You know, it's based on the value. The yeah. value. Yeah, yeah. Now, I want you to, your experience, I mean, having traveled all over the world, where have you received, you know, the greatest commendation for, for your dad's work? Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, um, the, the Europeans are very... The, the Europeans, actually, the Germans, the French, the Italians, they they have um, they have been very good. Um, we've had a lot of patronage from them. Okay. And um, over the years, everybody is also a participant of the industry. It doesn't matter now. Like we said, mm. social media has opened up everything. So hmm. when I post a piece of art, either on Facebook or on Instagram or on LinkedIn, you are getting a response from China or from wow. Indonesia or from wow. Japan or from wow. Cuba. Hmm. So, you know, you're getting a response. Sometimes they just want to know what is the idea behind this piece of art. At the end of the day, they are either acquiring or they are not acquiring. But... The mere fact that the piece of art has created some kind of, um, you know, it's some kind of attention is important. That attention is important. It actually helps the ego of the artist and it makes the artist um, want to continue to work. Hmm. It's very important. And the artist must um, um, respond to his audience. And, you know, from the, the exhibitions we're talking about should be from time to time maybe once in two years, once a year, and you should experiment. You can't just keep coming out with the same old thing. Hmm. There must be something new from your stables, something hmm. new, something different, something that will give the wow effect, you know? Hmm. It must come from your stables now and again. Hmm. So, Now, yeah. what, has, what has been the impact, you know, of digital arts on art itself? you know, digital arts. Yeah. Yeah. Can you speak to that? Um, no, sorry. Can you, can you say that again, please? Digital arts. Digital. Yeah. You know? You know? Digital I know that it's... art is a... Go on, go on. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, digital art is a form of graphic art where they use software and all sorts of... Um, development tools to create art. It's also art. And um, 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 it's also encouraged that um, people use also, it's, it's a new medium and it's coming up very strong. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, I want you to, now, I, I just, if you are just joining us, I've been sharing the platform with uh, Ejiro Onobrakoya. I've been looking at the topic you know, um, leadership and art, and he shared a lot of a lot of nuggets with us tonight. Uh, and we want to appreciate those who have been uh, watching us and listening to us. It's such a privilege sharing the platform. 
and we've been speaking you know from various dimensions how to use arts to also encourage uh the youth to grow in the area of leadership um now do, your, your dad has a foundation i can see i think uh the the yeah then i think his network is uh a bit uh, yeah you're back now yeah yeah your dad has a foundation you know for arts can you speak to that um okay the bruce Pembroke foundation is um was established about 35 years ago um okay. it's actually an attempt to preserve observe, document, train, and um, to the sustenance of art. Okay. You see, it's, it's very important for an artist to, an artist or the art society to be able to create systems that, for example, if an artist lives for 100 years and goes, there should be places where people can go and look at the pieces of art of that person. Okay. Now, that foundation basically encourages documentation, training, and workshops for younger artists. And we have a permanent collection of over 2,000 pieces of art, wow. which um, will never really be sold. Wow. Um, you know, it will never really be sold. It will be... It, it will be from time to time to be changed and rotated. And then um, we, we can also have exhibition. We can loan some of the art pieces for exhibitions abroad. And we can have visiting professors who come to try and understand the life and the times of that artist then. So more or less the, the, the foundation is an entity that it's going to take the legacy of the artist to another level. Wow, wow. Yes. Wow, 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 wow. So as we begin to get to the end of this session, it's been powerful, amazing. For those who are just joining us, you can watch the replay. I've been speaking with uh, Ijiro Onobrakweya. He's an artist. He's also, sorry, he's a, uh, well, I also believe you are also an artist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. And is uh, you know, is someone is a professional is sought after. You know, your opinions are sought after all over the world. Now, I know that um, when it comes to auctions, like sometimes in Sotheby's, you know, in you know, they get your dad's opinion and also your opinion on the value of a particular uh, art book. Can you speak to that? Your opinion, yeah. Uh, well, like I said earlier on, what. Well, there should be a formula to determine yeah. value. Yeah. To determine value. Okay, let's take let's start from um, a young artist that has just graduated from a, a university or mm. from an art school. Yeah. And his works are on exhibition. Mm. Now that artist cannot attract super, he cannot just decide to put super prizes on his artworks yet mm. he has to encourage his clients to he has to he has to build a body of clients build a body of followers encourage them to collect his works and continue to work over time and get his works documented and shown in various places and centers all over the world now it is from this kind of thing this kind of activities that people begin to create narratives about an artist and his artworks. Now, the more people talk about an artist, the more they want to acquire his works, the more the work intrigues them. After then, an artist who is just a fresh graduate, maybe after working like another 10 years or seven years, the value of his works, depending on the kind of energy he has put into his work, will definitely increase because there will be more people now sorting out for his works. And that is how the value increases gradually. 
Now, mm. even the people that collect his artworks originally, his first collectors, now can even put those art pieces for sale at a premium. You know, it was the, the value that we added on those pieces over time. So, you see, um, I have a formula for evaluating for valuation of art pieces. Um, I look at the artist, I look at his his academic work, I look at the people that have been writing about him, I look at the uniqueness of his works, how different is he from other people, and all this will give them great, the number of exhibitions he has had, how long he has been in arts, how long he has graduated from art school, the, 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 the type of people that have collected his works in the past. Wow. Um, they do a range. There's a range. And sometimes it may fall below, sometimes it may fall above. But that range, you kind of determine that, okay, let us start at this price. Now, depending on how that exhibition or auction goes, you may need to adjust so that you get some kind of value that people can depend on. You know, because really and truly, art also, apart from the aesthetic value, it's a store of value. Hmm. People hmm. are beginning to store money in art. Hmm. You know? And when you store value in anything, it can be resold, it can, can be used to negotiate all sorts of things. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, I want to now talk about legacy, you know? Um, you know, we have a lot of people that have artworks that, you know, command so much value. But in terms of preservation, how do you ensure that you preserve art well so that even generations yet unborn uh, can be privileged to, to see that art and experience it? Well, um, first of all, we encourage governments and institutions to build museums. What is a museum? A museum is a, is, is a repository of artworks. And then um, not all Museums are not necessarily, the, the works are not necessarily sold, although there are some exhibitions where the works can be sold and depending on either the board of governors of the museum and all that. But the works must be properly preserved in museums or in institutions, maybe in universities or in, 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 in buildings of of um, maybe past government past status and so on. Now, the longer those pieces of work stay in those places, the more value it attracts because more people begin to see it. Those pieces are the parts and parcel of that establishment. For wow. example, my father's works that are at the Smithsonian in Washington. I mean, when I saw them, I'm like, wow. This is amazing, you know, for the Smithsonian to decide to choose this species in their permanent collection. It just shows that they must have some value for, for those art. And so therefore, people from all over the world that go to the Smithsonian will see the works. Now, um, places like airport, if you go to the Atlanta airport in America now, it's almost a, a, a vast, huge, a huge expanse of art, both sides, you know, and create um, um, a beautiful travel experience for people. You know, so mm. art can be used in all sorts of forms. And um, I mean, with some of our recommendation, the governor of the former governor of Lagos State has used almost the whole of Lagos as a pedestal for art. You know, there's art almost everywhere. And um, I know that we sat down to have that conversation, and uh, that was the result. So that is how to pre preserve art. And there must be art historians that can write and talk about a piece of art. And um, we're talking about legacy now. Art historians that talk about a piece of art. Then um, curators that are willing to research about an artist, the work, and his contemporaries, and have conversations about um, what the artist was thinking or was doing, if he's still alive, what he's doing. All that, so you know, wow. it's very important to be able to, wow, wow, to, to 
to take care of the legacy of the art and the artists. Yeah. Because wow, the, artists, thank you so the art will live forever, but the artists will not live forever. Wow, wow, wow. You know, uh, I mean, when we look at, you know, the Nigerian, you know, arts uh, space, if I can use that, you know, your dad has done so much, I mean, and his legacy is, uh, is priceless. Even we're still talking about him now, you know, he's almost 90 years old and he's still showing up all over the place. And he's still, you know, I was telling your sister that, you know, he's still working as hard as a 50-year-old a man, you know. Oh, what's the motivation? Can you speak to that? Yeah, yeah. It's still working. Actually, a bit. Are you there? The life of an artist yeah, is actually yeah, a little yeah. bit different, different from the life of the regular person. Now, um, the artist actually operates from within you know the, the the creative experience is you have to be deeply introspective you have to think you have to create ideas you have to be open to new ideas now the artist never really retires hmm. in fact the older he becomes he's like wine the hmm. older the wine the better his ideas begin to mature a little more after such a long time. So you find most artists that up to the time that they pass to the other world, they're still working. Hmm. They're working. If 100, 100 plus, they're working. Hmm. And um, it, it, it creates a, a different type of result. It's not, it's not like uh, maybe a doctor that has to resign or retire at a certain age. No, there's no retirement in the arts. You have to continue to work because the older you get, the more stimulated you get. You may not be able to do as much as you used to do, but you keep creating and you keep putting down your ideas. Hmm. You know, my father, for example, I mean, I'm sure as I speak to you now, he's in the studio. <laughs> you know, he, he's, he's, always, he's always working. So that's the idea about an artist. You, 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 you work till the end and you get more inspired, you get more ideas and, you know, you can share in the things you want to show to people. Wow. 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 Thank you so much, Ejiro, for adding value tonight. Thank you so much for adding value um, in spite of the uh, challenges of the network. You added so much. We appreciate you. Uh, if you're if you're on the platform, you can just say thank you to Ajiro just to appreciate him. Now, finally, who are your mentors? Okay. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, I worked in the bank for a little bit, and um, there's a lady called Mrs. Ifomai Digbe. She encouraged me very seriously in the banking industry. And um, when I went to the US to do software development, I have a friend and a brother called Professor Abiodun Akinkumi Mustafa, who encouraged me seriously. and. Um, of course, my father too is one of my mentors. I know, you know, <laughs> but my father is old school, <laughs> old school, you know. So, I mean, these people I call my mentors, I appreciate them very much, and um, they have added extensive value to my life, and um, kind of chat chatted me, encouraged me that look, anything I want to be is possible, and so these are the people I consider to be my mentors. Wow! Wow! Wow, Adrian, we're so proud of you. Where we thank you for supporting your dad's vision. It takes a, a, a very committed and you know a loyal son, even to preserve the legacy of uh, the man called uh, Professor Bruce Onobrakwe, and his works are all over the world. And I know that he couldn't have done it on it on his own. You are his, uh, his, his strategist. You are his brand uh, branding <laughs> branding. Uh, Branding officer, 
you are, you know, you are very visible in the family. And I know that for you to be representing him all over the world and going even as far as Iraq during the time of Saddam Hussein to present him with, you know, an artwork. Uh, you know, there's no doubt that, you know, you are, you are someone that we should treasure and celebrate. So mm -hmm. on this note, I want to appreciate you for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, on Leadership Talk with Adegoke. It's been, this is one of our, you know, best uh, sessions thus far. You know, uh, art is not just for the average man on the streets. It's for deep thinkers. And it can be used to carve uh, and grow leadership. And there's no doubt, even from the things that you have shared. But I want to challenge you. Um, in the area of mentorship, you know, because we have a lot of youths that are idle all over the True. place. And uh, if we can have initiatives for there to be, you know, competition among the youths, um, you know, I mean, in, amongst those idle youths, uh, we can have, you know, in the future, we ha can have access that will be, you know, at the, at the same level with even international artists. I, so I want to... You're right. Yeah, I want you to... Please, and if there's any way that you want us to have collaborations, please feel free, free to reach out to me. I can use my networks to bring people together to, because we want to do something, you know, uh, enough of just um, complaining, you know. Yes, and depending to, on but, government. Yeah, and depending on government, you know, government is almost getting, you know, they're running out of ideas, so they need us to help them. So we can, we can just show up, you know, collaborate with universities, polytechnics um you know and just choose you know those ones that are willing you know it's a lot of work but please um don't don't uh, forget that area because if you are not able to pass it on it's like a waste so i just want you to 30 seconds just share some things with us as we as we close i will take that responsibility seriously please I will. please 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 so 30 seconds what would you like to say on a final note well, I'll say it is important for government to also create, give, give um, the creative space some encouragement and um, kind of um, collaborate with them and um, make, it, make, make it possible for people to encourage them to be artists, to live and work as artists and get something out of society. Hmm, hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, my friends, my John Maxwell uh, colleagues, and one of my friends who just got his PhD in, the, you know, in uh, biology from the United States is on the platform. Uh, Dr. Tolu Waleke, family, congratulations, sir. And I also have my friend, Odeyemi Olai Wale uh, from JOS, also is uh, here just to challenge you and also to thank you. It says that art helps to tell the stories of the past and the future. Um, and he also says casting the vision uh, is all, you know, is you know, about the arts, it's about the act of painting, painting vivid pictures to others. I also had one of your friends who is also my fellow John Maxwell team uh, colleague, uh, Abiola Shoremekun, she was also here. Uh, you know, I'm sure she's also uh, joined us to also celebrate you. Um, Thank you very so, much. Yes, she's a, a fantastic uh, lady and she's also celebrating. You can see that you have fans from all over the world. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to so you. We just, want to, <laughs> we just want to appreciate you and uh, trust that. And everyone who has joined us tonight, and also one of my friends, uh, Taiwo Shekoni, was also here. Uh, he said most people um, don't even value the work of art. You know, he's also someone who is, uh, you know, an artist, but not by, you know, not by not by vocation, but, you know, he loves the art so much. So thank you everyone for joining us tonight. And once again, this has been Leadership Talk with Adigoke. Next week, by the special grace of God, we shall be looking at, um, leadership and real estate leadership and real estate i'm going to be here with a good friend of mine and um, for those who want to listen to um past episodes of leadership talk with adig okay if you go to um apple and uh, also on uh, spotify 
you can listen to the past a series of leadership talk with Adibuki. Have a good evening and stay blessed. God bless you. Mm -hmm.